if you guys know or heard but allegedly one of the biggest youtubers out there le a very legendary youtuber um called tana mongo is allegedly thinking of bringing back TanaCon. most of you might be aware of it you know it's kind of a viral moment around 2018-ish i think it was um where Tana decided to put a convention on as a response to kind of getting banned from vidcon at the time that was one of the biggest kind of conventions for youtubers and whatnot and loads of fans used to go there to meet their favorite youtuber take part in games and talks and all that sort of malarkey and i guess kind of Tana got banned or maybe didn't get invited to that vidcon and in response she decided to then you know put on her own convention and called it TanaCon, and i think oddly enough thinking of it now that was actually maybe the genesis for all these other youtubers starting their own sort of events type things because i think a lot of people especially in that youtube space would see other youtubers do something if they did it well it was obviously be an, an, an inspiration for them to try it if they did it poorly it also be an inspiration to try it because they're like hey if tana who people don't really think is that intelligent could put together an event and it mess up as bad as it did especially according to um that fucking documentary by that big dude i forgot his name he put the documentary together but essentially she put the fest the con of con on it didn't do very well and it kind of you know it's essentially kind of ruined her reputation not until one youtuber came along and basically put together a documentary that kind of painted her in a much fairer light and basically showed that she didn't really have good people around her she was way over she was way over her head didn't know how to kind of get out of it and by the time the event happened it was too late to kind of turn things around but clearly it was a complete catastrophe now the reason why i bring this up is because there's very something very interesting i've noticed about youtubers in general which doesn't really exist i feel like in any other industry or any other sector of entertainment for some reason youtubers get a lot more grace from their fan base than anyone else because obviously youtubers for the most part i feel like don't have the threat of cancellation you can't really cancel youtuber because youtubers have to only rely or only have to sort of focus on their own fan bases right so there's no way you can actually cancel or take out youtuber from the industry whereas you know similarly in, in, in a way that you could do to a like Hollywood actor right or like a t person that's on TV a lot because essentially if you cancel them it's easy because all you got to do is take away the agent and sort of like you know ex put a black mark against their name and no one's going to book them anymore and then all of a sudden they're not on TV anymore but when it's a YouTuber their audience and their fan base are viewers and as long as YouTube doesn't take them off the platform they're pretty much okay even if they get demonetized they can find other ways to sort of monetize and get money in but as long as they've got the ability to make YouTube videos they're basically fine there is no level of con cancellation unless it's obviously a heinous crime but I'm also just curious to know what the forgiving nature is about youtube fans they'll get scammed they'll get hoodwinked they'll get sold a dream and then the usually the influencer will come back around and you know offer some half-baked apology usually with a pet sitting on their lap and suddenly everything is forgiven and the fan bases are pretty much okay of course they'll lose some fans along the way but for the most part the fans seem to be very forgiving and i'm not really too sure as to why so i decided to do a quick google or do a quick youtube sorry and just check out one of the news stories regarding tanacon to see was it really that bad as i remember it or am i kind of you know hyping up a bit but i think this little news clip courtesy of cbs los angeles definitely does show you or does show us that it definitely was as bad as i remember so let me play the clip now yeah you guys when 20,000 people showed up at this hotel behind me for a venue that only fit 5,000 people things went really bad really fast and they even turned violent they tweeted that there was 20,000 people outside and the capacity is like 2,000 Moments before this gathering of YouTube fans turned wild, fans at TanaCon say an angry mob grabbed tickets and rushed the lobby of this Garden Grove Marriott, where Tana Manjo held her own event competing with VidCon. Jazlyn Damasco was in the lobby when she says she saw a stampede push through the front doors and trample fans and furniture. I got pulled by the shirt from security. I got Jesus pushed Christ. by a cop. I got pulled by the hair by a fan. <laughs> Police say hotel staff called them for help just after noon Friday. Over 20 officers showed up to safely escort fans out. One fan was taken by ambulance to the hospital with minor injuries. The security said, everyone, get outside. The event was shut down two hours after it started. DeMosco and thousands of others paid $65 a ticket for the two-day TanaCon. But there wasn't enough room to hold everyone inside. In tears, she called a friend to pick her up. I rushed over here, and as soon as I got here, I kid you not, there was children everywhere. I've never seen an event that was this poorly planned out. When I went inside, I thought I was going to have a really good time. Like, I'm going to be all my favorites. And 
that ever happened. These Bless Tana her. fans never even made it inside. We stood three hours in the heat just to be told to go home and check back tomorrow. And you drove all the way from Utah, 11 hours. Jesus so you're come Christ. Back tomorrow if they do this again? Absolutely. <laughs> See? That, to me, was a perfect way to end that clip, right? After all the nonsense you heard, after people getting trampled, the, the poor young lady talking about her hair getting pulled, getting showered out by security guards. Because imagine, all these girls are, like, under the age of, what, 22, right? Between the ages of, like, 70 to 22. So imagine being shouted at by some big, aggressive guy. Um, you probably never get shouted at that even at home. You suddenly get blared at. You're on your own. The sun is beating down on you. There's not a lot of shade. There's, not, there's no refreshments. You have no idea what's going on on and you're getting blasted at by the security guard obviously it's going to be quite scary but at the end of it they're still like super fans they're still stands for the most part um, to the point where all that bad stuff was said and then they go out right at the end right at the end right at the end when they said would you come back again right here right back at the end here from Utah 11 hours so you're going to come back tomorrow if they do this again absolutely that essentially is what enables YouTubers to get away with murder because essentially they're fans generally genuinely genuinely do not care they're in it for the long haul they're in it for the ride which i feel like a lot of fans are like that i think even hollywood fans the fans of hollywood actors and actresses and whatnot and people on tv sitcoms and series and whatnot i think the ones that get cancelled even the stuff like to do with army hammer i think if you had to poll his actual fans i don't think they turned off from him it's just more so the industry decided hey what you did was too much is heinous we're gonna get you out of paint and they're the ones that sort of cancelled in the industry which is i'm always not been a fan of i think it's crazy to say and it's a very controversial statement to kind of it's controversial position to hold but i've always kind of believed cancer culture that way i don't really like in terms of industry blackballing cancer culture i'm a big fan of more so your fans deciding if they want to cancel you or not your fans being the one hey you're obviously taking the piss you don't deserve this fan base you don't deserve to have a career doing what x y and z we're going to stop buying your tickets we're going to stop attending your shows and if that person then disappears into the night it is what it is but this idea that industry whole you know industries can collude like even the stuff with andrew tate the same sort of thing can decide okay you don't get a platform and then they all kind of follow suit and delete every single profile that you have on their platform too so it kind of removes your voice from the internet that i'm not a big fan of at all in my opinion but i'm just fascinated always have been by the ability of youtubers to be absolutely terrible people to treat their fans like absolute dog crap but still have them queuing around the block i have no idea how that happens how you create that but i guess maybe it's a more so maybe it's like a because you watch them so often and because you feel like you know them there's more chance to forgive them because you know that's how you are with your friends maybe it's like that i'm not really too sure because or it might be just an extreme version of a parasocial relationship right where you legitimately feel like you know them to your core like they're your family and you want you don't turn your back on family do you so who knows but regardless tanakon is meant to be coming back i'm sure we're going to have many many youtubers covering it i'm sure it's going to end up being a complete shit show anyway because for some again the last bit on this as well Tanacon could have been a success especially if you watch a documentary I mean Shane Dawson that's the guy I made it Shane Dawson for the most part you saw somebody that clearly didn't delegate well didn't have good support network around her was obviously somebody that couldn't say no to certain things it wasn't very decisive not really a business person all that blah 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 but there is an opportunity for those YouTubers who have a big following um, of kids who don't mind spending money or don't mind spending their parents money there is an opportunity to make those kind of things successful but you need to delegate and you obviously need to kind of link up with somebody that can already do that's already done those kind of events so they can just kind of put your face on it or put your branding on it or something that's probably the best way to go about it but I guess these YouTubers are so money hungry um, that they see the numbers for how much it would be, how much they would make if they did it on their own v how much they would make if they did it with like a production partner and they just always try and do it on their own because they feel like they got the resources they've got a friend who knows how to do this a friend that does that somebody hook up all these weird hookup things but really if they just linked up with a production company and said hey an events company hey i want to put on this convention could you or even a convention company who knows and say how can you help me do it how can i execute this at the highest level and then kind of run it that way it'll be a complete success but i've got a funny feeling that it won't happen history will keep repeating itself and we'll get an absolute shit show and we'll um you know people like myself commentary channels that kind of feast on this stuff will be um very well fed for the next few months if this does end up happening but yeah tanacon is due to be coming up very very soon so keep an eye on it keep an eye on it